release carbon dioxide, poisoning the air. How much trouble are we really in? If you don't understand CO2 and our atmosphere, these seem like plausible questions. The truth is, Earth is finally emerging from historically low levels of carbon dioxide. Without the industrialization of the past 170 years, we would be struggling to feed the burgeoning population of our planet. Here is why. CO2 is a miracle molecule. It is a rich plant food that is essential to all life on Earth. Without enough CO2, plants die and all life perishes. CO2 is measured in parts per million because there is so little of it in our air. The measurement of parts per million is a determination of how many molecules of one type exist within a million air molecules. For example, a reading of 420 ppm of CO2 means that an air sample of a million molecules contains 420 CO2 molecules. So let's look at the numbers for CO2. Below 150 ppm, most plants die. Earth nearly crossed that line of death around 18,000 years ago during the depths of the last ice advance. The warming that ended that ice advance caused the oceans to expel CO2 and increased levels to about 280 ppm. The use of fossil fuels also began the process of liberating large amounts of CO2 that had been removed from the air during the creation of coal beds and oil and gas source rocks. Although our current levels are still not optimum for peak plant and crop growth, the additional CO2 in the air has provided a much-needed catalyst for global plant growth. It has made the Earth a lot greener. And the continued use of fossil fuels will further accelerate the fertilizing effect carbon dioxide supplies. Nearly all crops, including winter wheat, corn, potatoes, soybeans, sugarcane and rice, have all experienced record-setting production levels since the 1850s, thanks to more CO2, warmer temperatures, and the use of fossil fuel-derived nitrogen fertilizer. Forests are expanding, deserts shrinking. Growing seasons have been lengthened and crop production has skyrocketed. Current CO2 levels are near 424 ppm, but plants become even healthier more productive and drought resistant at CO2 levels up to and exceeding 1,200 parts per million, three times higher than where we are now. The more natural plant food in the air, the better we can feed a hungry world. Net carbon zero is a dangerous goal. Instead of trying to remove carbon dioxide from the air, we should be adding more. Its sustaining effects will keep us healthier, and well fed. Hungry for more? The experts at the CO2 Coalition are cooking up a big helping of hearty climate information. 